Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I'm doing a question from a viewer and their question was, what is a shared death experience? Boom, boom, let's get into this. Now, first of all, I'd like to take you back in time to the mid 70s, I think is when he started. Dr. Raymond Moody. He was the man who I think he had a near death experience himself and he didn't know what to call it. So he termed, he coined or termed the words near death experience. Okay. He was the one who started the near death experience research teams. He started it all back like 30, 50 years ago. So I, when I had my own near death experience in 2001, 2002 to 2003, I started researching what happened to me and I found his email address. So I emailed Dr. Raymond Moody. He replied. And over the next six months, we emailed back and forward where he was asking me, like researching what happened to me. Did you see this? Did you go there? Did you, what else did you see? So he was the one who quoted me as saying I had one of the most in-depth NDEs he had ever experienced. Now, one thing I want to show you today, my NDE was my experience. So when I wrote my book, Five Years in Heaven, all that that happened in there happened to me. So this is how we understand what a shared death experience is. So I'm just putting my book away because when we have a shared death experience, it's not about us at all. It's being a part of an NDE that happens to someone else. Now, some people call them shared death bed experiences because generally you've got a loved one in hospital, they're in hospice or whatever where they're about to pass over and the doctor will ring you and say, oh, can you come up? They're going to pass tonight. So everyone gathers at the hospital. And as that person lying in bed, the patient, who I call the patient, we're the witnesses. So the patient may be your grandfather, maybe an uncle. <sighs> I don't like hearing about any death, to tell you the truth. So we'll just call this the patient. And as the patient is there nearly at the time of passing, they may start seeing things. They'll reach out with their hand and start talking to people who we can't see. There might be a glow or orbs starting to appear in the room. There may be that white tunnel, like in the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, where you see that light tunnel coming down to collect them. So there's all these different versions of what we've heard in what's called shared death experiences. But what makes these so unique, so special, and most of all so treasured and adored is that we experience the passing of the soul of another person. So a shared death experience is when you actually witness another person or a dog, cat, any animal it can happen to. And we experience their passing over. So there's, ex there's heaps of examples out there. If you look at shared S, shared death experience, S D E's. Not OBEs, not out-of-body experiences, not NDEs, near-death experiences, shared death experience. And what they all say is, I know I was so upset because it was my grandmother passing over, but the love I felt, the emotion I felt, the peace, the calm I felt because it was coming from them. So... We've got stories out of hospitals where a lady said that it was her husband. He'd been in a coma for three months. They turned off his life support. So he was about to pass over. And as they turned off the switch, she felt his hand move just before they moved to turn off the switch. And then she looked up and his whole face was glowing. And in that glow, she saw it come out of his face like a second being his ethereal being energy being was coming out even before they switched off the switch because his consciousness was aware he was about to pass 
So there are experiences where the soul leaves the body before it actually passes over. So we've got this example and then we've got other examples where a lady was sitting next to her grandmother in the hospital. She's sitting on a chair and her mother's lying there and all of a sudden the grandmother sits up in bed and she calls out, Tommy, Tommy, and she's reaching out. And the lady sitting in the chair looks up and there she saw Tommy, her uncle, which is the son of this woman. She saw her uncle Tommy said, who died years ago. It was her son coming back to claim her when she passed over. Those sort of stories absolutely give me the goosebumps. So she's sitting there with her grandmother and her uncle Tom appeared. She saw him. And then as the mother, the grandmother passed over, they both disappeared. Wow. Well, the grandmother didn't because she passed over, but the energy all disappeared. Then we've got another story. This time it happened at home. A lady was there with her heart, um, husband. He had a heart attack. And he's there gripping his heart and he's, she's called the ambulance. She's frantic. She runs outside because she hears a noise. She runs out to open the door to let the ambulances in. She comes back and there he is standing in the room looking at her like I'm looking at you right now. And she saw his body on the ground. And then all this white glistening light appeared around him and he shot up through the sky of the roof of the house. So do shared death experiences occur? Yes, they do. How common are they? Well, they're only as common as people are witnessing them to share their stories. The more we share our stories, the more hope and belief that we give out there that this stuff actually exists and there is life after death, correct? So if you are in the presence of being with someone who's passed over, feel honoured, feel privileged if they do share that experience with you. You know, I was the first at the hospital when my grandmother died, much to my auntie's dismay. I got into bed with my grandmother and then a nurse came in and said, hey, you can't do that because she'd already passed over. They wanted to dress her um, I wanted her to look presentable for when relatives came to view her. So I got out of the bed and I was sitting there holding her hand and they said, oh, we've got to let go now. We've got to put it because they put her hands like this over her chest with the pillows and everything around her to make her nice for when other people came. And I kept looking up and I just kept saying, Nan, are you still here? I hope that you can hear me. It's all right. I love you. I love you so much. That's what I was saying to her just in case she was still there in the room at that point. Because I know from my own experience, when I was floating, I was floating for 45 minutes. So there's a good possibility she may have been floating there too. So even if you are in the presence of someone who's just passed over, talk to them, let them know it's okay. Let them know you love them. Most of all, don't let them be scared because they'll be the ones who are scared, not for what they're going through, because they love it, but they're scared for what we are doing in the world without them. You know, we ask for our messages and our signs from our angels and our deceased relatives all the time. And I say it like this. They can feel our emotions. And if we're grieving, if we're upset, and we're still mourning the loss of them. Do you think they're going to come through when we're sad to make us sadder? No, they come through after time when we've grieved, when we've mourned and when we start to feel good again about their life, when we're happy about their memories. That's when they come to us because they don't want to hurt us. They don't want to make us more sad. They want to come so we love them more. So just think about that if you haven't had um, visitations from your loved ones, okay? So I hope that answers your questions today. Talk to you all soon. Love you all. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.